Oh, step up. Say hi. Say hi. Oh, she wants to say hi. Say hi, Sparky. Say hi. Say hi. Can you say hi? In today's episode, I take on this so many questions tag. Hello everyone and welcome back to Arthelia's Vintage and Handmade. My name is Naomi and thank you for joining me today. Before I get into the hashtag, I just want to say welcome to all the new subscribers. The last time I recorded a video, I said we were nearing the 50 subscriber mark and I was just trying to get it there and it seemed like it was taking quite a while. But since then, we have passed 50, we have passed 60, 70, and 80. I am so excited that we are less than 20 subscribers away from hitting the 100 subscriber mark. Wow. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for being here. Now on to the hashtag. So today's episode will be addressing the so many questions tag. If you haven't heard of this hashtag before, this has been started by a group of ladies over on the Facebook Sewing Vlogger Help Support Group. It's a great place to come and hang out and learn lots of good tips and tricks if you are a sewing vlogger. I found out about this hashtag from Gemma over on the YouTube channel A Girl So Geeky. So if you're not familiar with her, I will link her below. Go check out her channel. It's really fun. So what the So Many Questions tag is, is a set of about 40 questions, mostly related to sewing, with a few other fun questions thrown in. And sewers are encouraged to choose about 10, or whatever you prefer, to answer on your channel. So let's get started. Question number one, how and when did you start sewing? If I really think about it, I would have to say that I probably first started doing hand sewing when I was quite young, maybe six or seven. My grandmother had a lot of sewing scraps and sewing supplies around, so I would like to make things for my dolls, um, Barbie dolls, things like that. So um, I remember uh, getting out a lot of lace trim <clears throat> and decorating a ready-made um, fashion doll wedding gown and putting a lot of really gaudy multicolored bows and laces and things like that on this uh, dress so that was probably one of my earliest memories of, of sewing so I had to be six seven eight maybe maybe around that age that's when I first started hand sewing I did machine sewing in in um, middle school and high school um, I remember as a teenager making just things on my own on my mother's sewing machine uh, several um, just basic skirts um, I made my senior uh, senior assembly dress, a uh, dress for my graduation party, I made that. Um, we sewed pants when I was in uh, junior high. Uh, I didn't do sewing in high school, um, but uh, I did it at home on my own. So sewing has always just been part of my life on and off. Um, and so it's been <laughs> quite a number of years that I would, you know, drop it and pick it up, but I did get, I got my first own personal sewing machine as my high school graduation pre present and I do still have that machine it is the machine that um, I s have been sewing with for the past number of years until recently when I got a newer machine um, but I'll touch more on that in another question so on to number two planner or improviser I think I would have to say that I am a planner. It kind of makes me nervous to improvise. There's something about being a stickler for following rules that I think I have to plan out exactly how something's going to go, when I need to have it done by, um, which you know pattern I'm going to use, uh, just all aspects of of the outfit, the dress, whatever it is I happen to be making, but I really think that I'm trying to allow a little more um, spontaneity in my sewing 
and tell myself that it's okay. It's okay to make these alterations. If you don't like this a certain way, it's okay to change that. That doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means you're being more creative and you're expressing more of your own um, ideas and style within a pattern. Everything doesn't have to be exactly the way it was designed. It's okay to be creative with it. Um, so, uh, yeah, definitely a planner, but trying to be a little more of an improviser. Uh, on to question number three. And if I'm looking down, it's because I've got notes on my questions, what the questions are right here that I've chosen. Um, do you have any pet helpers? Yes. I have eight pet helpers and I will insert pictures for you and at the very beginning of my video you would have seen a little outtake that I saved of my main pet helper my dog Sparky or our dog Sparky um, she is about nine years old she is a terrier uh, and black lab mix and she likes to come up to my sewing room and hang out with me all the time. She'll lay on my little sofa and just be with me. If she gets left out, she's not not happy. She likes to be, she likes to be in here. So occasionally, if I'm filming up here, you might hear her little nails scratching on the floor as she walks around. But that is Sparky. And then I will insert pictures of the rest of the gang. Um, those are our seven cats. Um, our oldest cat that we have right now is Bubbles. She is just a little fluff ball. She's a, um, a little, um, she's a mini compared to everybody else. She's a tiny little cat and she's uh, just a, a little bit of a grouch. We always would call her a grumpy cat sister. So that's Bubbles. And then we have our big boy, uh, Shadow, who was a stray kitten in the neighborhood who we picked up. And um, he, he's just a big chunky boy and he likes to lay on fabric and patterns and all those things uh, but um, now that I am sewing mostly upstairs uh, I kind of have a little more control over the cats laying on everything because they would definitely be in and on all of it um, then we have a cat that we took in a few years ago uh, now uh, her name is Nellie and at the time we thought she was a boy until she started giving birth <laughs> so it turned out she was a girl and she gave birth to four kittens uh, which we ended up keeping suckers that we are for a little kitten uh, she had three boys and a girl the girl is Tilly who is our little torty and she was the first one to be born and then she had three orange boys one of which is a Maine Coon mix named Foxy. He's our big ball of fluff. And then we have the other two that we call the twins, uh, Theodore and Tigger. So that is our kitty crew and our puppy. <laughs> so yes, definitely I have helpers. Question number four. Where are you from? Well, if we go all the way back, I was born in Brooklyn, New York, and my family moved when I was about three years old to Pennsylvania, Northeast Pennsylvania, about uh, 30 minutes uh, near, uh, 30 minutes away from Scranton. You know the office, you know Scranton. So I lived about 30 minutes from there uh, in the Pocono area. And uh, later in life, when I was married, I moved to, down south to Fort Smith, Arkansas, and that has where I have been for the past 20, 21, 21 years, 20, something like that. Uh, we lived in other parts of Arkansas when we were first married, but we have been in Fort Smith since 1999, and um, it's pretty much where we're going to stay, I think. It's a great place to live and be. It's a the second largest city in the state, but it feels like living in a small town. It's very nice, and we enjoy it. Um, what sewing machine do you own and use? Question number five. Uh, as I said earlier, um, my machine that I had been using for quite a number of years since I had graduated high school was a Singer Merit 4525. Um, it's a very basic machine, but it is um, heavy duty by the standards of today's modern machines. It has some plastic on it, but the base and the majority of the components are all metal. Um, and it still runs, it, it runs well. It probably could stand to be serviced. 
um, since you know I've had it more than you know probably 30 25 years maybe uh, but it um, I was looking for something that would do a little more be a little bit smoother um, it, it's a good workhorse probably if I was making jeans or something heavy I would go back to using that for, for that um, project um, but I wanted to treat myself to something a little more modern something computerized and uh, I recently got a Janome 811 which I am enjoying very much I have barely started even using it uh, just as I'm getting back into sewing again after being away from it through my illness um, but so far so good I'm really enjoying how smooth and nice this machine runs um, I bought it on Amazon and I will link it below if they still have that model if not they I'm sure they have something that is quite similar but uh, I will link it below uh, it will be an affiliate link so keep that in mind it in no way will cost you any more if you purchase anything uh, from me that I link down there for uh, as affiliate links it just gives me a little bit of a percentage back to help support this channel um, and then as I said I'm also in possession of my grandmother's old machine which is is not in use it is folded up and it is uh, used in my living room just as like a, a table uh, it is not currently in working condition um, but it is a very good old Singer machine uh, and then I also have one other machine that I do not use often but it is my backup machine it belonged to a dear friend um, it is a basic Singer modern machine uh, Singer E99670 so it's it's a good newer basic Singer model so for someone that is wanting uh, just starting out it's not computerized or anything but it's a good basic starter machine um, I will link either that model or something similar down below if you want to take a look at something like that um, <clears throat> question number six how do you store your patterns well you can see most of my patterns right here I don't have this completely full yet uh, but it still has room and I'm still working on getting it organized I'm gonna pan over here just a little bit so you can see what I have as my unit and then I will tell you about what this is here it is right here goes down to the floor I've got a box in front of it waiting to have more uh, patterns organized and put on there but I'll tell you what that is get this back set again okay um, what that is is a solder multimedia storage tower so it is something that is designed for DVDs blu-rays CDs things like that so it is a narrow or a shallow bookshelf which I like instead of buying a standard size bookshelf which would have this greater depth that is not necessary for patterns because they are not that deep unless you have you know really big ones but I would store those separately I uh, mostly have my vintage this holds my vintage ones in the packaging that I put them in um, which if I can grab one I will show you this is how I store my vintage patterns it is a comic book bag and cardboard I cut the cardboard down to fit the smaller size bag and then I just slide the pattern inside so I am able to keep all the the the, the fragile vintage patterns with the envelope in the front and I do not have to store everything within the envelope if it's too fragile to keep handling it I can put everything in the back section and then if I make tracings they can go in there too and this all fits right on that shelf just fine these stick out just a little bit beyond but it's totally fine they're on there securely enough to stay and it doesn't take up as much room as a standard size bookcase would uh, this I got on Amazon and I will also link that below if you're interested in taking a look at that to see uh, what that unit looks like okay so how big is your stash question number seven well that's another thing you can see right behind my head if I shift this way this this is the bulk of my stash it goes down to the floor um, there's eight cubes yes eight cubes full 
it is it is just nearly completely full but this is not all my stash I have a little bit more that I need to either get on there or get another set of cubes I have some things in storage boxes I need to go through um, so yeah uh, I have recently cataloged uh, or I have been cataloging my um, fabric and pattern stash on uh, Evernote and at this time if I take a quick look my calculations um, my fabric stash is currently at 101 pieces Now I know there's a lot that I have not photographed and added in there so that would be 101 outfits or more depending on the quantity that I have uh, of each thing so yeah it, it's it's a pretty big stash number eight what inspires you well if you couldn't tell already <laughs> I am a big vintage enthusiast. It's uh, a style that I have liked my entire life. Um, as I've gotten older, I've embraced it more because I have learned that, number one, I can make clothes in the styles that I have always liked. So I'm influenced by old Hollywood movie stars, the styles that were uh, popular in the 1930s through the 1950s. So those are those are all fashions that I have loved uh, and admired for years. So now I have come to the realization that I can either buy vintage or I can make them myself. So that that is my biggest influence. Uh, question number nine proudest make or moment. I'll insert a picture here of my favorite make to date. It's Butterick B5880 and I made it in 2017. Uh, so it was one of the last makes I had made before my illness started in uh, November of 2017. Um, but it is a beautiful uh, dress made in a vintage reproduction style rayon of a Hawaiian map print. So uh, it has all these cute little figures of the, uh, of the Hawaiian islands and little characters on it and fishing nets. And I was just really pleased how that turned out. I, I wasn't sure how uh, the side drape ruffle type piece was going to come together, but it worked out fine and uh, I really enjoyed making it. It's completely lined. Um, the fabric is beautiful. I used a vintage 19, uh, probably 1930s, 1940s red um, center clasp buckle uh, on the belt and it's just it's just one of my favorite dresses. I'm just was so pleased with how it turned out and the fit was perfect right out of the envelope. Um, so if you'd like to see an actual review of that pattern, I can sit down with that dress and go over some of the aspects. Just put that in the comments below if that's something you'd like me to review. Um, but that was definitely um, one of my, my favorite dresses to have made uh, in the last few years. And finally, the last question is woven or knit? Well, as of right now, I have only ever sewn one knit garment. Um, it was uh, one of the Burderick, uh, Burderick, <laughs> a one of the Butterick Gertie wrap tie uh, tops. I made that several years ago. Um, that was the first knit I had made. I I like it, but it was it's not my favorite thing. It was not my favorite thing to make. Uh, I have currently in my stash two other knit fabrics and everything else is woven. Why? Because most of the vintage styles and most vintage clothing was woven and I just, I just prefer it. To me, knits are something that uh, you just see a lot. It's easy to pick up a little, you know, novelty t-shirt in the store or a plain t-shirt and that's not something that I want to sit down and make. It, it doesn't excite me. Um, I'm not a huge basics person. Basics to me would be a really cute print blouse in a woven. Um, but um, 
so knits are just not appealing to me to sew for myself um, there's the couple of tops that are uh, require that do require <laughs> I'm getting completely tongue-tied there are a couple of vintage or retro patterns that I have purchased that do require I think they are retro I don't think they're vintage um, a knit and that's why I do have you know what I have in my stash so I would never sit down and make a tank top or a t-shirt or something like that I know a lot of people do and that that's fine but that's just not me if I'm gonna make something it's gonna be fun and interesting and that is it that is my 10 questions if you're interested in doing this yourself please uh, check out all the links below I will post a copy of all of the questions so you can choose yours. Once again, thank you for joining me today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have not already subscribed, please do so. And until next time, bye!